what we, what we need in this country is, and in my opinion, and I thought about this quite a lot, is we need to make the national defense of the state possible. And it is nonsense to suppose that 8,000 soldiers, which is roughly currently what we have, and the equipment that they possess, are capable of maintaining our national independence against any possible uh, intrusion by a foreign power. Now, historically speaking, you'd say that's been all right because there's two reasons. One of them is, in practical terms, although we have not been members of NATO, in fact we've been under the NATO umbrella because we were, were being regarded during the Cold War as part of the strategic alliance. Uh, uh, in practical terms. In other words, Ireland couldn't go Soviet because if Ireland went Soviet, then they, the Soviets had at the other end of Europe and then they had a, they, from both sides. It's why the Americans permitted Franco Spain to continue to exist because they, of the fear that it would go Soviet if it wasn't under Franco. And, uh, and then the problem then was the Soviets would have a, 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 a foothold way over the other side of Europe, and they could come at the middle states in between easily. So we were under that umbrella. Now we are under the umbrella of a kind of a fantasy world in which, <coughs> in practical terms, the French don't want to rule Ireland. <laughs> in practical terms, the British don't want to rule Ireland. In practical terms, the Germans don't want to rule Ireland, or at least they don't want to rule it by occupational force. So we don't need an army, you would say. Um, but we do because the European Union wants to occupy us. Can we, as a nation, form the kind of military force, or are we willing even to form the kind of military force to expel the potential invaders that might there might be? The most likely one being the European Union in the event that we were to withdraw from the European Union under terms that they found unacceptable. That's the most actual, physical, likely scenario in which Ireland would find itself at war in our lifetime. Are we capable of even creating that military force? And the answer is no, we are not. But what we are capable of doing, and what, we're, and what Switzerland was capable of doing, is we are able to create, and what we were able to do during the War of Independence, is we can create some place that is easily conquered, but is absolutely ungovernable. And the way in which that was done between 1918 and 1921 was haphazard compared to the way it could be done by a state planning in advance. And one of the things the state would do and I accept your, your uh, what's got your, your, your restrictions concerning uh, the mental health tests and so on and so forth for, for the... But I think there's more required. Uh, and the more that is required is also the solution to the biggest problems that arise with guns. And that's why I think of Switzerland in particular. Per capita, the Swiss own more, <coughs> own more guns than the Americans do. So when they talk about gun, gun deaths in the United States, how come the Swiss aren't shooting each other all the time? One of the reasons for it, one of the reasons for it, apart from the fact that European culture is, uh, is degraded in the United States to the point where it's mayhem. But the other thing is that the Swiss introduce you to your first gun as a military weapon in honor a national service. Then the kind of national service that I would suggest for Ireland is uh, compulsory for all males, uh, um, possibly voluntary for females. I'm not 100% I'm not on that yet. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm moving between not having them and, and making it voluntary. I'm not moving between compulsory and non-compulsory. Um, a compulsory national service uh, for at least two years uh, every fourth weekend every male between the ages of 18 and let's say 45 because I'm 46 <laughs> 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 uh, 
Sure, yeah, if 45 is the normal line, I'm not just saying that to avoid it, but because uh, I will go. Should be compulsorily uh, spend one in every four weekends uh, on military training. Military training for the purposes of a guerrilla war, not for a conventional war, because we are not going to ever be able to fight a conventional war. Every citizen should, as they do in Switzerland, should then, after receiving their military training and receiving the, the kind of military discipline that goes with that in terms of how to use a gun and how to be responsible with a gun, should be permitted to bring that gun home with them. And when I say home with them, then we are talking about military-grade weaponry. We are not talking about pistols, and we are not talking about hunting rifles. We are talking about military-grade equipment. In the hands of private citizens who have been properly trained in how to use them and have received the military discipline to have the good sense that goes with the physical capacity to use the weapon. That is the future defence policy of the National Party, and that is the future gun control policy. Gun control, in my view, is learning how to use a gun properly and responsibly. It's That's the only gun control. <laughs>